has been completed. Please lock the machine. The United States will remember this day in which it was singled out for attack in the General Assembly for the very act of exercising our right as a sovereign nation. We will remember it when we are called upon to once again make the world's largest contribution to the United Nations. And we will remember it when so many countries come calling on us, as they so often do, to pay even more and to use our influence for their benefit. America will put our embassy in Jerusalem. That is what the American people want us to do. And it is the right thing to do. No vote in the United Nations will make any difference on that. But this vote will make a difference on how Americans look at the UN and on how we look at countries who disrespect us in the UN. And this vote will be remembered. Thank you. The United States simply stated a fact. They officially declared what has always been true. Jerusalem has been and always will be the capital of the state of Israel. Those who support today's resolution are like puppets. You are puppets pulled by the strings of your Palestinian puppet masters. You are like marionettes forced to dance while the Palestinian leadership looks on with glee. You are blind to the lies, unaware of the manipulation surrounding you, just like a puppet. This vote is nothing more than a performance of delusion. I have no doubt that today's resolution will also end up in the trash bin of history. I have no doubt that the day will come when the entire international community will finally come to recognize Jerusalem as the eternal capital of the state of Israel. Thank you. بل بسبب قرارها الذي يعد اعتداء على حق الشعب الفلسطيني الأصيل والطبيعي في مدينة القدس الشريف وعلى الأمة العربية وعلى جميع مسلمي ومسيحي العالم وعلى مكانة القدس الدينية والإنسانية الاستثنائية ونؤكد على أن القرار الأمريكي لن يؤثر على وضع ومكانة المدينة المقدسة بأي شكل من الأشكال وإنما يؤثر بطبيعة الحال على مكانة الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية كوسيط للسلام وذلك لأنها فشلت في اختبار القدس رغم تحذيراتنا وتحذيرات العالم أجمع من التهاون في هذا الاختبار ومن مغبة قرارات تؤجج ولكننا لن نقبل استخدام السيادة كذريعة لانتهاك القانون الدولي والتعدي على حقوق شعبنا الفلسطيني غير القابلة للتصرف والتنكر لحقنا في وجودنا على أرضنا إننا نقف اليوم مع دول العالم أجمع متحدين من أجل الحرية والعدالة والسلام 
لا يثنينا فيتو أو تهديد Before this meeting, a UN member state threatened all the other members. We were all asked to vote no or face the consequences. Some are even threatened with the development aid cut. Such an attitude is unacceptable. This is bullying and this chamber will not bow to do that. It is unethical to think that the words and dignity of member states are for sale. Let me put it in this way. We will not be intimidated. You can be strong, but it, this doesn't make you right. I thank the distinguished representative of Turkey. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. The United States is refusing to criticize Israel after Israeli forces shot dead at least 61 unarmed Palestinian protesters taking part in the Great March of Return in Gaza Monday. More than 2,700 Palestinians were injured. At the United Nations, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley blocked a call for an international investigation into Israel's actions. On Tuesday, Haley repeatedly blamed the violence on Hamas while praising Israel for showing restraint. This is what is endangering the people of Gaza. Make no mistake, Hamas is pleased with the results from yesterday. I asked my colleagues here in the Security Council, who among us would accept this type of activity on your border? No one would. No country in this chamber would act with more restraint than Israel has. During her remarks, Nikki Haley refused to place any blame on Israel. She later walked out of the Security Council chamber when the Palestinian ambassador to the UN, Riyadh Mansour, addressed the council. Since Palestinian protests began on March 30th, Israel, Israeli forces have killed at least 112 Palestinians and injured more than 12,000. During that time, they've been, there have been reports of just one injury to an Israeli soldier. Haley's comments have been widely criticized. On Capitol Hill, Senator Dianne Feinstein said, quote, I'm deeply disappointed in Ambassador Haley's decision to block a U.N. inquiry into yesterday's events. Without question, there should be an independent investigation when the lives of so many people are lost. Uh, she also criticized President Trump for moving the U.S. Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. On Tuesday, the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court said she's closely following the situation in Gaza and would, quote, take any action warranted, unquote, to prosecute crimes. Meanwhile, the United Nations Human Rights Office has condemned the, quote, appalling deadly violence, unquote, by Israeli security forces in Gaza. This is U.N. Human Rights spokesperson Rupert Colville. Lethal force may only be used as a measure of last, not first, resort, and only when there is an immediate threat to life or serious injury. An attempt to approach or crossing or damaging the Green Line fence do not amount to a threat of serious, uh, to life or serious injury and are not sufficient grounds for the use of live ammunition. To talk more about the crisis in Gaza, we're joined by Norman Finkelstein. His most recent book, Gaza, an inquest into its martyrdom. He's the author of many other books, including The Holocaust Industry, Reflections on the Exploitation of Human Suffering, and Knowing Too Much, Why the American Jewish Romance with Israel is Coming to an End. Norman Finkelstein is a son of two Holocaust survivors. Um, welcome back to Democracy Now!, Norm. Talk about what's just happened uh, in the last two days, in the last six weeks in Gaza. Well, I'll take off from the comments that you uh, po um, posted now from Nikki ha uh, Haley and also from Diane Feinstein. Uh, Nikki Haley says that Israel has shown remarkable restraint. So what does the picture look like? About six, more than 60 Palestinians were killed. Uh, about... Uh, over a thousand, or actually over two thousand, were injured. And uh, what happened on the Israeli side? 
These demonstrations have now been going on for six weeks. Over a hundred Palestinians have been killed. Yesterday, or May 14th, Israel announced for the first time there was one, quote, light, in the, light injury of an Israeli soldier. One soldier after six weeks apparently incurred a scratch. Now, she says Israel has shown amazing restraint, but all the other witnesses say differently, respected witnesses. Amnesty International, they refer to Israel's murderous assault on overwhelmingly nonviolent protesters. Diane Feinstein, she called for an investigation with all due regard, and I wouldn't oppose an investigation. We have to remember there have been many investigations already. There was after Operation Cast Lead in 2008-9, there was the Goldstone mission. After Operation Protective Edge in 2014, there was the mission led by the New York State Judge, Mary McGowan Davis. And they all recommended that there has to be some action taken. And all of it just died in the UN bureaucracy. So although I don't think Israel should get a free pass, I don't hold out any optimism that even if there were an investigation, it would go anywhere. The same thing with the ICC. I totally support an ICC investigation. But even if finally the chief uh, prosecutor, Fatim, Fatima Ben Suda, even if she did undertake an investigation, at some point it either will die inside the ICC or it will go on interminably. But Norma, I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you in terms of this particular, what's happened in the past few days, whether this mm -hmm. is really a turning point on the scale, let's say, for instance, of what the Sharpeville massacre was mm -hmm. in South Africa, uh, in terms of turning world opinion completely mm -hmm. against a regime, because the, uh, the previous attacks by Israel were basically uh, not as visible uh, to the rest of the world on camera as this one was. Uh, and secondly, the difference was that in previous attacks, the Israelis were claiming that Hamas was itself attacking Israel. Here you have uh, unarmed protesters basically with, sli with, uh, with slingshots and with Molotov cocktails up against a, a total uh, military force. And whether you think that this is a turning point in terms of world opinion, being able to continue to ignore what's happening in Gaza and Palestine? Well, I think that's the critical question. The Sharpeville massacre in 1960, it was nonviolent protesters who were burning their pass cards. And it was about 67 people, if my memory is correct, who were killed. Here again, it was overwhelmingly nonviolent protesters. In this case, 62 or 63 who were killed. So it's roughly the same numbers, roughly the same scenario. The important point is it shows, it demonstrates the power of nonviolent resistance in mobilizing public opinion. This is not the first time Israel has targeted civilians. In fact, Israel's operations, what it calls its operations, have overwhelmingly targeted civilians. So after Operation Cast Lead in 2008-9, Richard Goldstone, the report that concludes that Israel's objective was to, quote, punish, humiliate, and terrorize the civilian population. They've always targeted civilians. And in fact, if we were to look at, you know, coldly at the facts, in the past six weeks, Israel has killed a, a little over a hundred Palestinians. During Operation Cast Lead in 2008-9, on the first day, in the first five minutes, Israel killed 300 Palestinian civilians. It was uh, Palestinians who were attending a graduation at the police academy. So. As you point out, and it's a critical point, that the world is now enraged, indignant, outraged at a much lesser, relatively speaking, a much lesser criminality displayed by Israel. Why is that? Well, it's for the reason you already suggested. It's because it was nonviolent and Israel had no pretext 
to justify its attacks. And so it was exposed to the world. And you need a pretext to do it. Otherwise, it looks very bad in international public opinion. And so Israel, that was the IDF, the Major General uh, uh, Amos Gilad. Amos Gilad, yes, Amos Gilad. He's, uh, and it was true that they need a pretext. And when they don't have, and all along the pretext has been the Hamas rockets, which in fact aren't rockets, they're just enhanced fireworks. But it gave Israel the pretext. And now they don't have the pretext. Interesting fact. Because Israel did not target Hamas's leadership during Operation Protect Cast Lead. It did not target Hamas's leadership during Operation Protect the Veg in 2014. But it dreads, it dreads the nonviolent protests because it puts a constraint on the amount of brutality it can inflict. So even though, and it's true, 163 people killed on May 14th, about 2,000 injured. Even though those are large numbers, we have to remember they only loom large because it was nonviolent. In the course of Israel's other operations, that's what happens in the morning or in an afternoon on a typical day. We have to break and we're going to come back to this discussion. Mm -hmm. Our guest is the scholar Norm Finkelstein. His latest book is called Gaza, an inquest into its martyrdom.